Back in March, space tourism company Zero to Infinity announced that they were taking their balloon-based flight concept and expanding it into the commercial satellite launching business. They called it Blue Star. But I feared that the news meant that the company was abandoning plans to take space tourists to the edge of the Earth's atmosphere in large pods tied to huge balloons. Well, it turns out that the company not only remains committed to space tourism, but they just unveiled the final design of the balloon pod. Over the course of the last nine months, the company worked with the Elisava School of Design and Engineering on the interior design of the pressurized pod. Balloon rides could be operational within the next two years. And to try and gain some insight on the user experience, six student designers on the project locked themselves in a 12 square meter space for six hours about two hours longer than the expected duration of the flight, that's actually gonna carry four passengers and two pilots nearly 22 and a half miles above the Earth's surface. It'll take about an hour and a half to climb, they'll have two hours of viewing, and then a one hour return. The return actually sounds pretty intense, as at one point, the pod will detach from the balloon and allow passengers to experience free fall in zero gravity before a parachute engages. I mean, Call me crazy, but I think like of all the changes that might still happen, that, that might just be one of them. So we're gonna take you up there, you're gonna just hang out for a while and then, peace! The design is a modular space five meters in diameter. The pod will have reclinable and movable seats, wash basins, and the floors and walls are gonna be built of soft materials. And the windows are going to be smart, so you can actually use applications in the window to listen to music or locate places on Earth, for example. The students created a 3D printed model of the concept, which I found interesting. Particularly the woman trying to mind her own business and look at the blue marble outside while some slick business type tries to hit on her. So you come here often? <laughs> Make better use of your time, creep. Your ticket costs 125 grand. Look at the majestic view or use the smart window to find your grandmother's house. You probably should call her actually, it has been a while. Yeah, but it's pretty trippy, right? The cleanup effort at Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant has had some robot problems. Since the radiation levels in some areas are high enough to kill a person instantaneously, officials working on decommissioning the plants need to rely on robots to assess a lot of the damage. The problem is, until now, the robots just were not working. Back in March, the remote-controlled Scorpion robot ran into trouble when it was blocked from accessing a core area by a mixture of melted fuel and broken structure. And in February, a cleaning robot only lasted two hours before radiation caused camera problems. So, the head of decommissioning said it was time to think outside the box. And it looks like the newest robot, the Little Sunfish, could have some success. And yes, they went from the, the scorpion, scorpion to the Little Sunfish. The Little Sunfish is an underwater robot co-developed by Toshiba in the International Research Institute for Nuclear Decommissioning. It's about the size of a loaf of bread, has lights, two cameras, and a dosimeter that measures radiation. It also uses five propellers to get around. It's controlled by four operators, and in a recent mission, it was able to inspect structural damage without succumbing to the very high levels of radiation. It was a rare win for Tokyo Electric Power Company, which has struggled with the cleanup effort ever since it was crippled by a massive earthquake and tsunami in March 2011. Just a lot of marches today, huh? Now this one's sweet, yo. All right, we're back to the balloons. Polar engineers in Greenland are blowing up massive balloons under the snow to build structurally strong underground tunnels. It's an interesting solution to structural problems that have plagued research facilities in some of the world's coldest regions. A lack of materials and limited infrastructure can often lead to underground tunnels that cave in. According to a new article in Science, this new technique was developed by a physicist from the University of Copenhagen. It starts by cutting a trench with snowblowers. Then they blow up a balloon that's up to 40 meters long and fit it into the trench. Then they cover it up with snow. Once the snow hardens, they deflate the balloon and they're left with a tunnel that can be used as a shop or a shelter. Because of the cylindrical shape, the rooms are structurally stronger and they contract slower than rectangular shaped rooms that are shored up with wooden beams, for example. But, I mean, we're talking about like two centimeters improvements. A recent study actually showed that the balloon tunnels contract at 25 centimeters per year, compared to 27 centimeters per year of traditional rectangular shapes. Now the difference seems negligible until you put yourself in their shoes. And you think like, what would it be like to work 
and live in an environment where the walls were literally closing in on you every day. Every day. I feel like the rooms are closing in on us, man. They are. Not only is the technique more environmentally friendly, but it's cheaper, which is likely a big selling point for researchers in remote areas. Instead of shipping building materials, you only have to send a few deflated balloons. Yeah, you got that pallet of, oh no, it's just like a UPS package. Just off to Antarctica. Here's your balloons, sir. Go make a tunnel. I'm David Manti. This is Engineering by Design. <laughs>